Today, we're making potato euros. That's right, potatoes in a euro. We're going to start off with some veg. We're going to have half an onion. I'm just cutting it into big slices. I also have my pan preheating on about medium, which for ours is two and a half, because ours goes to five. You know what? I'm just going to throw these right in the pan. And also... Half a bell pepper. I chose yellow. Why? Why did we choose yellow? It just seemed nice. Oh, okay. And same basic shape. I'm going to cut those ribs out, though. I just don't like them. Same basic shape. In the pan. I didn't use any oil. I do want some of the liquid to come out, so I would like to use just a little bit of salt with this. And as you can tell from listening, there's just a bare sizzle at this point. If you can't hear it, it's because the noise cancellation kicked in, but it should be sizzling. So I probably could have waited another minute to put my pan in, but I have here, how much salt is this? Half a teaspoon. Probably don't even need a half teaspoon, but we're gonna do it. I wanna break those up. The salt will actually help get the liquid out of the veggies. And that actually helps it to cook better. Sounds strange, but that way it prevents the need for oil. If our veggies don't give up their juices quite as readily as we'd like, we do have some veggie broth on the standby. See this piece right here? Oh, it broke, okay. There was too many pieces together, it was bothering me. Okay, see what happened though? The salt just caked to the bottom. So I'm gonna use a little veggie broth to get that back up into solution. The things that happen when you're cooking, you know, you gotta be prepared. Now I'll just turn the heat up a little bit. And I'm essentially gonna boil off that veggie broth. That was only a, a tablespoon or two, maybe three. Okay, it was like three. I don't wanna be one of those cooks that, oh yeah, I used a tablespoon and pour in half a bottle or something, you know? But the veggie broth now should take up all that salt and it should be able to get into the veggies, letting them release their liquids and properly cook once the veggie broth pretty much boils away. Ours goes to five. Once most of the liquid has cooked off, we have some herbs to add. What do we got? These are flavor enhancers that are just gonna enhance the flavors naturally inherent in our veggies. So this is one teaspoon of no salt seasoning. This is the Kirkland, the one you get at Costco. If you can't find that one, I have my own brand. Yep. <laughs> it's just a mixture of herbs and I'll link that in the description below. Isn't there something else that's supposed to go in this? Black pepper. Fresh cracked black pepper. Now, as you can tell, all the liquid is basically gone. So I'm gonna turn off the heat completely, mix this through, and we're gonna set this to the side because we don't want it to burn. It would not be potato euros without... Potatoes. For this, we're just gonna use two because we're just gonna make a couple of them. And what I wanna do is cut them into basically steak fry size. So cut like half an inch off that way and then cut into half inch, well, maybe a little more than a quarter, maybe three eighths of an inch slices. And then cut each of those slices into like half inch wedges, chunks, pieces, whatever you wanna call them, like that. I'm using red potatoes this time. We used um, actual russets the first time and it was great. Um, I don't imagine that red potatoes are gonna be that much different. You can use Yukon Golds or anything like that. If you see a little black spot in your potato, cut that right out. Nobody needs black spots in their potatoes, but it happens. Now I wanna take those, these potatoes and toss them in a bowl. They still have all their natural liquids on them. The water, oop, found a black spot. They have their natural liquids still on them, the waters and whatever that was in there. So that helps with the next step, which is? Seasoning. Half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I wanna kinda spread it around. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Fresh cracked black pepper. Roughly half a teaspoon. A full teaspoon of dried thyme and a teaspoon of dried oregano. And you wanna toss to coat. Use your hand. Get in there, get to know your food. Your hands are the best tools you got, as long as they're clean. We wanna really coat these up. This is where a lot of the flavor is gonna come from. We're gonna use the air fryer and I'm gonna cook these at 360 degrees for about 18 minutes. But if you prefer to just use the oven, I would probably do it at 400 degrees for like 20 to 25 minutes. Almost the best part of the video, but we have changed over. Now we're gonna assemble. But first, one thing I didn't show you, slice the tomato. Nice big slice if you want. And 
What do we got here? We got some pita. These are whole wheat pita that we actually got from Aldi. Yeah, they have flax and oat bran. And just a little bit on them. They are one gram of fat each, 70 calories, and three grams of fiber. So, yay. That's why we bought them. And to that, we're going to add some of our air fried potatoes. Just, you know, a couple pieces. Let me get this out of here. We don't need that. Just a couple nice we're, pieces. We're trying to be more down homey here with our situation. I mean, now, it got really down homey, apparently. We, I'm just going to tell you straight out. We're going to put way too much stuff on this pita, and it's going to be a complete mess to eat. Because that's how we do things here. Okay. Next up is our veg. I'm just going to eyeball that much. Look at that. More. More. He says more. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna put our tomato. Tomato. I, he's gonna eat this. I'm not gonna eat this. Why? Because I can't. I can't put my mouth around. Are you trying it. to say I have a big mouth? Is that what you're saying? Next is our new favorite thing, and I know it's simple pleasures, right? It's but really amazing though. It's spring, spring mix, mix from Aldi. From Aldi. We keep it in its tub. It stays really fresh in our refrigerator. I actually cram the whole thing in our crisper just to make it extra, extra fresh. But it lasts like a good week. Yeah. And we put it on anything. Everything. When you want some greens, put some greens. Yeah. Okay, so next is gonna be tzatziki. But for that, we have to do some, some slow-mo and some um, pictures of this. So we're gonna stop this right here and you're gonna see the slow-mo of the tzatziki. But the tzatziki is my tzatziki recipe. I'll make sure to link it in the description below. Yeah. It's been sauced. Time to try it. You're gonna have a bite of this too, come on. It's kind of crazy if you don't. You had to put up with me all day while we were making this, come on. I... All right, well, here we go. First, that tzatziki is amazing. <laughs> She's cheating. What's really interesting is the potato with the pita. It's just not something I ever would have thought of. The whole kit and caboodle, I, I'm cheating. I've had this many times before. Yeah. So, yes, I'm trying to be more delicate on camera. All right, fine. Because I don't want to look like... Like I did? What he did. <laughs> but All right. it is fantastic. Please try this. You will not be disappointed. I promise you that. Mm. Mm -mm. This isn't the kind of thing that I would put in the fridge and hold. The potatoes you can probably re-put in the t air fryer. But, all right, before I make any more of a mess of my face, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on The Bistro. Bistro.